the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Lord, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, And for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty Lord and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son, that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 31. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, with, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. is from Hebrews chapter 7. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And they came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I see Lucy and Mark. Come on up for children's message. I'm an acolyter. Why do I have to come to a children's message? Acolyters are still children. It's true. 
true. <laughs> it's an excellent question, though. So today we're talking about babies. Have you been around a lot of babies? Have you guys been around a lot of babies? Do you remember what it was like when Lucy was a baby? What's one thing that babies do a lot? Cry. What? Cry. They cry. Why do they cry? Are they just super sad all the time? No, because they have problems. Like, they need to go to the bathroom. They need to eat. Exactly, yeah. They, that's the only way that they can tell you that they need something, right? They want a mom. They want a mom, yeah, for some reason. It's crazy. Yeah, so babies cry a lot. They cry is the only way. They can't actually say the words, right? So they cry, and then you have to figure out, what do you need? Do you need food? Do you need to be changed? Do you need to go to sleep? Are you sick, right? It's, it's a mystery. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, sometimes it's crazy. You just have to think, why is this kid crying? We don't know, right? In our gospel lesson today, somebody was crying as well, except... He was an adult. Were you guys listening to the Bible lesson? Kind of? No. So this adult was crying, but what was he crying about? Do you remember? What was his problem? What did he need? This guy was crying because he was... This guy was crying because he needed healing right? He needed healing, and he, need, and he knew who could heal him. Who was it? God. Or mm -hmm. Jesus, yeah. He knew that Jesus could heal him, and so he cried out, but he didn't just keep crying. He actually said to Jesus, I need you to heal me. He told him exactly what he wanted Jesus to do. Some, Because what? Because he couldn't walk. Because he couldn't walk? Was that what it is? Yeah. yeah. No. You're thinking of the Sunday school story. In Sunday school, we had a guy who couldn't walk. In today's uh, story, it's a guy who can't see, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So he was crying out to Jesus, and he said, I need you to heal me. He told him exactly what he needed. Do you ever tell Jesus exactly what you need? Why not? Sometimes we are just vague, right? We don't say to Jesus, I need you to do this for me, right? But does Jesus always know what you need? No. Yes, he does. Jesus always knows what you need, even if you're not real clear with him. But we can be really clear with him. We don't need to go through anybody. We don't need to um, ask mom to tell Jesus what we need, right? We can just say exactly what we need. How do we tell Jesus what we need? What do we do? What do you think, Lucy? How do you talk to Jesus? Sleep. Sleep. Prayer at night? Yeah, so we can tell Jesus exactly what we need. I have a prayer for us to say today. Oh, and Jesus tells us that he will give us exactly, exactly what we need as well. Maybe not what we want, but what we need. Are you ready for my repeat after me prayer? Heavenly Father, we know that you love your children and you want what's best for them. Help us remember we don't need to worry about anything. All we need to do is speak up and ask you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's true. I believe it. All right.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bartimaeus sits on the road near one of the city gates. He's blind. He's a beggar. That's his life. Seeing and seeing nothing and calling out whenever he hears someone passing by, asking for alms, asking for mercy, asking for a little help. He spends all day, he sits and he listens and he cries out. I'm going to guess that he doesn't stray very far from home, that he's usually in the same spot every day, and I'm going to guess that the local residents, by and large, are used to the fact that he's there crying out for help. They've just seen him as part of the background noise over there. Except on this day, he hears a crowd, an unusually big crowd. The volume of the noise and talk grows as it nears him, and he hears that Jesus of Nazareth is on the way. From all of his sitting and listening, he's heard about Jesus. In fact, he's heard enough that he's come to believe that Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah, and you know that because in his cry he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He calls out loud enough that he's no longer any background noise. Now he's becoming a nuisance. So much so that many of the people are rebuking him and telling him to be quiet. Honestly, this cry may not be out of the ordinary for Bartimaeus. Beggars are always looking for mercy, always crying out for help. and They won't have anything to give in return. And if perchance they should know the name of whoever it is that's passing by, that they're crying out to, perhaps it's Hezekiah the woodworker. Well, Bartimaeus would say, Hezekiah, have mercy on me. And I'm sure he spends his day calling out like that. If that's the case, then the cries are normal and the people normally just put up with it, even if they notice him at all. But today, today Bartimaeus is a bother and so they tell him to be quiet. Maybe he's extra shrill at the moment. Maybe he's getting on their nerves, whatever it is. He's going to double down and cry out all the louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Sounds like something that happened earlier in the Gospel of Mark, earlier in this chapter. People were bringing their little, squirmy, grimy children to Jesus so that he could touch them. Remember how that incident played out a few weeks ago? Jesus got indignant because the disciples were preventing those squirmy, germy little children from crawling all over Jesus. After all, he's an important man. He can't be bothered with the likes of these curtain climbers. But what did Jesus say? Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child shall not enter it. Lesson? The Messiah has time for squirmy, germy little kids, and for you too. With just a couple of events between this and today's text, Jesus passing through and Bartimaeus now has the temerity to call him by name because he expects that Jesus will have time to help one more beggar like him. And Jesus stops. Lo and behold, in the midst of all of that crowd, all the commotion, all the noise, hearing Bartimaeus crying out, Jesus stops. Call him, he says. You almost have to smile at that, as if Jesus knows what's going on and he's expecting fully to hear that cry from Bartimaeus. Essentially, he's saying, tell him I want to see him. And so they tell Bartimaeus, and we're told that he got up and sprung up and went off to see Jesus after he threw off his cloak. And the son of David then asks him an extraordinary question. What do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus says, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus says, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And just like that, old, blind Bartimaeus is blind no more. 
It's as if Jesus has come specifically to help beggars like him. Well, you can drop the as if part. Jesus has come to help blind beggars like Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus knows it. He's come to make the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame leap, and the mute tongue sing for joy. That's what's so good about Bartimaeus. What he says isn't much, but it's pure gold. He declares that Jesus of Nazareth is none other than the Messiah, the son of David. And he declares that this Messiah has come to give sight to the blind, which is exactly what the Old Testament has said about him. Now asking Jesus for healing to regain his sight is kind of like going to McDonald's or Burger King and asking for a burger. That's why Jesus was there. And even if the crowd doesn't believe it, Bartimaeus trusts the word that he's heard and knows that Jesus is there for him. It's a great miracle which stands by itself, but let's give it a little bit more context to see just how important this is. For the last couple of Sundays, the Gospel reading is focused on a rich young man. You remember, a couple of weeks ago, there was this rich young man who came up to Jesus and had a crucial question. He had a checklist of things that needed to be done, and this seemed to be the final one. Tell me what I need to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus said to him, keep the commandments. No problem, he says. I've kept all those. Jesus had enumerated them. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't kill. I kept all that since I was a little, since I was a little boy. Jesus said, but one thing you do lack. Sell what you have and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. Well, you remember that this young man, this rich young ruler, had a lot of wealth and it had become his idol. And we're told that he went away sorrowful because he had many possessions. And then last week's gospel was the aftermath of that. Jesus watched him walk away, that poor young man who wanted riches more than Jesus. And Jesus had to shake his head and say, how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It would be easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for the rich to gain eternal life. And the disciples were amazed. They were astonished at what Jesus had said. Jesus goes on to say, that in fact, not only is it hard for the rich to get into heaven, to get into the kingdom of God, in fact, with man, it is completely impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. Which brings us to Bartimaeus, the rich, uh, the, the blind beggar, who is the opposite of that rich young man in so many ways. The young man has many possessions. Bartimaeus hasn't got a thing. The rich young man strides up to Jesus with all of his pride and arrogance and presents himself confident that he is someone Jesus should marvel at while Bartimaeus cries from afar until Jesus summons him. The rich young man relies on his works and his possessions, but that never enters into the conversation with Bartimaeus because he's got no good works or any works at all for that matter, no possessions, otherwise he wouldn't be out there begging. The rich young man says, what must I do? While well, Bartimaeus, well, he just cries out for mercy. But when Bartimaeus comes to Jesus, what he's really saying is something like this, I believe, Lord, that you can help me. And Lord, I've got nothing to give you in return, so if you do give me sight, it's, that's only going to be because you're the Messiah, and you're merciful. Which Jesus essentially is saying, you've got that exactly right. I am the Messiah, and I am merciful. And being merciful, and the Messiah, he heals Bartimaeus. And then Jesus tells him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And what does Bartimaeus do? 
Well, he certainly didn't go away sorrowful. He didn't go away at all. He went and followed Jesus. Last week we heard Jesus say, many who are first will be last and the last will be first. And that brings to a close the series of stories in Mark 10. And the rich young man, whom even the disciples believe is closer to heaven than they are, goes away sorrowful, while little kids and beggars who have nothing, nothing to offer, they get the kingdom of God, Jesus says. They get the kingdom of God because the first becomes last, and the king becomes a beggar. And when Jesus gave Bartimaeus sight and took away his blindness, you have to wonder, what happened to that infirmity? What happened to that blindness? Well, truth be told, the Savior took it into himself, along with all of mankind's sin and everything that makes us unrighteous. He carries all of the affliction and sin in our lives, and he takes it to the cross, and he dies with it there. He dies with all that is wrong with Bartimaeus and all that is wrong with you and me. And he does that just so Bartimaeus and you and I can have the kingdom. He rises again on the third day so that one day he can call Bartimaeus again. This time, though, out of his grave to everlasting life. And not just for Bartimaeus, but for you and me, too. He does it for all those who have known him and loved his appearing. Luther has a couple of famous quotes about beggars. Perhaps you've heard one or both of them. The most famous one is one that was found in, a, in the pocket of his coat after he had passed away, which said, we are beggars, this is true. Before God, we've got nothing to give. Nothing in our character, nothing in our resume that we can trade for eternal life. Our possessions, our works don't impress the king of kings. He doesn't need them anyway. Besides that, they are all tainted with sin. All our righteous deeds are like filthy rags, Jeremiah says. In fact, it should be obvious that it offends God, those things we try to offer to him. When we say, Lord, you know I promised, I know that you promised to deal with me because your son shed his blood and died for me but I'd rather be like that rich young man and argue my works have at least earned me some favor. But that doesn't work, does it? If God's going to help us, it's not going to be because we're cute or because we've earned it. It's because we need mercy, because we have nothing. That's why I love the other quote that Luther is supposed to have said about being beggars. He says, before God, we are beggars with empty sack. Like Bartimaeus, we come before God and we tell the truth. We say, oh Lord, I need your help and I've got nothing. I've got nothing apart from you. Nothing in my hand I bring simply to thy cross I cling. All I've got is this empty sack, Lord. It needs to be filled. And you're the only one who can fill it. We make the honest confession just like we did early in the service. We confessed our sins and then we begged for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And in calling him the Christ, we've honestly said that we know Jesus is our Messiah, our Redeemer. And calling for mercy, we honestly say that we have nothing that we need to give him, but we need to receive everything from him. In fact, the truth is we do start out at a loss, don't we? We've got a whole heap of sin, so it's not just that we have got nothing that impresses Jesus. We've got a whole awful lot of things that bring harm to our lives. But by the grace of God, we know this to be true, too. You know that he's already borne your sins. By the grace of God, you know that all our afflictions and sorrows our Lord Jesus has carried to the cross. And even though there are times when they might dog us in this life, they no longer have the power to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. By the grace of God, by his grace alone, 
You and I don't need to run away and hide on Sunday mornings, but we can come and bow our head like that tax collector in the temple, like Bartimaeus along the road, and we can cry out, Lord, have mercy, and pour out our need by confessing our sins, trusting that our Lord is gracious and merciful, abounding in steadfast love, and he forgives. He strengthens your faith, He opens your eyes to the truth. And while we might not always like what we see about ourselves, it's part of the Lord's work to heal and deliver us. And while the law that always accuses us might rankle us at times, beggars can't be choosers, but recipients of mercy are always finding that the merciful Lord does what's best for us. And so we come today from whatever we've been living with, whatever we've been going through, we present ourselves here. Because mercy is available here, because love is poured out here from Calvary's cross for us. It comes in words and water and bread and wine. And we are assured once more that God is acting for us and toward us. And he's acting for us and toward us out of his grace and mercy, that he delights to come to us with our empty sack and fill them with the rich gifts of his forgiveness and life and salvation. And we know those gifts are sure. And we know those gifts are good. And we know those gifts are last will last. Because our Jesus died to make it so. He feeds the hungry for righteousness with his body and blood. He promises everlasting life to beggars like you and me. Today he says, take heart, child. I'm calling you. Come and receive from my hand the gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Come and be assured that I am with you always. And on the last day, I will call you again, and I will say to you, get up out of your grave, my child, because my kingdom is your kingdom, and you are a beggar no more. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that transcends our human understanding will guard your hearts and minds until life everlasting. Amen. God has made us his own people by our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. It has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to summon from this veil of tears to himself the soul of Edie Fector this past Thursday night, and so we remember her family in our prayers this morning. Hear our cries and be attentive to the voice of our pleas, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David. Send forth laborers into your harvest, Lord, and preachers to gather your elect from the farthest parts of the earth. Uphold and sustain all pastors and missionaries faithful in their callings. Bless our schools and teachers, our congregations and their servants. O Lord, you have appointed us as priests in your kingdom, not to offer dead works out of our own weakness, but to offer prayers and living sacrifices made holy, innocent, and unstained, by the once for all service of Christ, our high priest. 
Make every Christian household constant in prayer and good works, since our Savior always lives to make intercession for us. Strike down the haughty, O Lord of hosts, and every hostile voice that would rebuke the voice of faith with its cries and prayers. Uphold the protection of our nation and its leaders in honest service for the good of the people, especially that the gospel may be preached and heard without hindrance. O Lord, save your people, and be a father to your Israel, the holy Christian church. Give courage to the hearts of all who cry to you for mercy in whatever circumstance they may find themselves in. Give them steadfast faith, and be pleased to grow, to grant them recovery, that they may follow you now and into everlasting life. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with the family of Edie Fector, whom you've called to her eternal rest in Christ. Support and sustain them in this time of their mourning with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a beautiful reunion in heaven. Keep us mindful that we are mortal so that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son. Give eyes of faith to those who commune this day that believe in Christ's promises and his testament. They would discern the true body and blood distributed here in the sacrament and so taste and see that he is good. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those who be created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, the stew in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.